This is an historic day. Their gracious majesty's confidence in humble Columbus is vindicated. There is a western route to the Indies. And therefore, I hereby name these islands the West Indies. Uh, East Indies. What? East Indies, surely. What are you talking about? We sailed west to find them, didn't we? They're to the west of us. Therefore, they're the West Indies. Yeah, but I thought the whole point was that we were proving that the world is a globe. So if these truly are the Indies, which incidentally is something else I'd quite like to talk to you about at some point, <laughs> but assuming they are the Indies, then they must be the East Indies, the most easterly point of the Indies. Do you see? Do you see this? It's your hat. What kind of hat? Captain's hat. What does that make me? Captain. Yes, it does. And what does that make these? The West Indies. Bingo. <laughs> Hi, congratulations. Well done. Oh, thanks, Martin. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I, I won't gab along because, you know, this is your big day and you've got all these other nice people to see, but I just wanted to say I'm really sorry about your dad, Helen. Oh. Well, yeah, thanks. I was so shocked when I heard the news. I didn't even know he was ill. I mean, bloody hell. Well, anyway, never mind that now. I mean, mind that now, but, you know, this is your big day, and uh, I got you a card. Do, do you want to put it with... Um... Oh, it's not a wedding card. It's a I'm sorry your dad's dead card. <laughs> Which I am. I'm just having to get a bit of a move on with all these lovely people. And, Mike, um, here's a congratulations on your engagement card. <laughs> well, better late than never. <laughs> exactly. And uh, I'm sorry she dumped you. <laughs> but she didn't. So, I think we're up to date now. Oh, and this is for if you have a child. Oh. And this is for if it dies. <laughs> well, um, I'll pop off now, because uh, this is your big day and you've got all these other people to see. You don't need me going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I've got cancer, but listen, <laughs> that's nothing to do with it. This is your bit. I just don't see you very often, so I thought I'd strike while the iron... Oh, God, is it, is it serious? Are you all right? I'm completely... Don't worry about... I mean, look at all these people. I'm holding everything up. Oh, God. Is, is there anything we can do? No, 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 no. Seriously, I'm as happy as Larry, really. So, look, um, if I don't see you again, I mean, ever again, then have a bloody good one. Lovely service. <laughs> Great service. housewives and layabouts of the British Empire. This is television talking in your head. Welcome to this, the first experimental broadcast of television during the day, or as we call it, Elevens' television. But first, the king. You're watching television. Stay tuned. At this time tomorrow, another chance to catch footage of Hitler's corpse, where pictures of the charred remains of Corporal Hitler are accompanied by a selection of Vera Lynn's B-sides. But now, our new daily conversation programme, hosted by Mrs. Patricia Wilberforce, the Mrs. Patricia Wilberforce programme. Good morning, ladies and the war wounded. My name is Mrs. Patricia Wilberforce. Today we will be discussing real-life sticky situations as much as is seemly. My first guest is Mr. Albert Compton, whose wife claims he has a tendency to behave in an inappropriate manner. <laughs> Mr. Compton, do be seated. Oh, I don't like to make a fuss. Oh, it's always like this. I'm sorry, but we'll have to stop it there, as Mrs. Compton has said fuck. <laughs> oh, I do beg your pardon, viewers. Mrs. Compton didn't say fuck after all. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Albert Compton. My next guest is Miss Margaret Blyton, who, following an incident in the blackout, has got herself in the family way. <laughs> and I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say that I hope that Miss Blyton's unfortunate fiancé insists on a deoxyribonucleic acid test when the little bastard is whelped. <laughs> Join me next time on the Mrs. Patricia Wilberforce programme when I'll be telling the shocking story of Mrs. Elsie Taylor, who freely admits to taking two sherries before dinner and whom I shall be having imprisoned for delinquency. <laughs> Goodbye. Are you in some way uncouth? It will be our researchers' very great pleasure to make your acquaintance. Kindly telephone us on Mayfair 426 and state your business. <laughs> 
Rolling Horse. How are you? Um, are we okay? Uh, I know a lot of things got said yesterday. I've, I've had a lot on my mind. I'm, I'm sure you have. But, um, I think we probably both overreacted. You look well. Look, I can understand if you're not in a very good mood with me at the moment, what with all the fallings out and, and, and whatnot, which is why... Ta-da! It's all right, it's not a gun. Joke! Joke! <laughs> which is why I, I thought I could cheer us up with a song, which I wrote. Feel free to join in at any point. You are not alone. I am here with you. Join in. Though we're far apart, any time now, you're always in my heart. Come on, horse. You are not alone. After me, I am here. All right, forget it. Just forget it. I mean, what was it? Was it the gun joke? It was a joke. Have you got a sense of humor? Why is it always me with the peace pipe? I'm always the one carrying the white flag. It was a joke. <laughs> so, Sir Walter, the new world lies at our feet. And have you given any thought, I wonder, as to what to call it? We shall name it, of course, after our beloved queen. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry, sir. Let it pass and hail to this glorious land, Virginia. Uh. What? Who's Virginia? Why, the Queen of England, you dog! Oh, right. Except, I don't know how to put this, but she's not called Virginia, is she? She's called Elizabeth. I, I'm well aware of that, but she is, I trust you will agree, a virgin. Uh, yeah, as far as I know. I mean, I'm sure she is, but do we really want to name a country after that fact? Well, why not? Well, it seems a bit rude. Rude? How so rude? Well, you know, to other nations, bringing up the fact that our Queen's never done it seems a bit personal. They might not want to know. OK, well, maybe I'll have a think about it. Oh, uh, hang on. Remind me. Who's the captain? You are. And, and whose boat is it? Your boat. Yeah, and, and who is it that decides what we call the, you know? You do. Do I? Yes. Do I really? Yes. Welcome to Virginia. <laughs> Can I just take this out? <coughs> oh, and can I reserve Cold Mountain? No. Pardon? I said no, I'm not going to reserve that for you. This is far more appropriate for you. Well, I know it's silly. I just thought I'd read some... God-awful rubbish, like you always do. Yeah, I'd steer clear of Cold Mountain if I were you. It's not like when you watched it on DVD with your girlfriends. There's no dishy Jude Law to hold your hands through the difficult prose. What? Yes, it's all words. Most of them quite a lot longer than the ones you'd find in your copy of Top Sante. I... Or Grazia. Look at that. That's a comprehensive list of all the depressing books you've ever taken out. Do you know what that tells me? No. It tells me you are possibly the dullest, most dunderheaded female ever to scrape together the mental wherewithal correctly to fill in a library application form. <laughs> Did you have help? Did I what? Shh. This is a library. <laughs> Just look at it. It's like the reading list of the University of Thick. I went to Warwick. When you talk to people, do you find they do this a lot? Uh-huh, yeah, fine, uh-huh, yeah, mm. Well, I... It's because they're not listening. When your friends see you, essentially they're doing you a favour. You're like a sort of charity for them. It's their way of giving something back. <laughs> Basically, you're like him. <laughs> I'm making my donation now. I don't believe you're saying uh -huh, all this. Yeah, fine, uh-huh, yeah, I mean, what yeah, gives mm, you the right? Yeah. Of course, it's difficult for you to grasp. You're a real idiot. Possibly one of the stupidest people I've ever met. And I lived in Leatherhead for six miserable years. <laughs> I'm getting bored just looking at you. You with your grey face and your dead eyes. <gasps> but... <sighs> bored! Are you still here, you soporific dullard? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all true. My friends hate me. There, there. 
<laughs> what can I do? Yes, what to do, what to do, what to do. I've had a little thought. <laughs> what? How about a little date? Hmm? <laughs> Just you and me, out and about on a little date. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, I'd like that. I think I'd like to go on a little date with you. Do you think that would be all right? Yes. A little date would suit me just fine. <laughs> now, I can't do Thursday. I'm making that documentary. What documentary? Oh, well, I'm making a documentary about the Battle of Stalingrad. Since when? They asked me, ages ago. Why didn't they ask me? I don't know. They probably didn't think it was your thing. My th It could be my thing. I could make a documentary. All you have to do is learn your lines and vaguely look like you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> Although, in, in this case, I actually do know quite a lot about the Battle of Stalingrad. What, because you've read Stalingrad? Not just that. And you've played a character in a sitcom who's also read Stalingrad, so they put one and one together and get someone who's not only pretended to read a book, but has also read a book. That is definitely not how it works. <laughs> causing untold loss of life and destroying several major buildings. If you've just joined us, the breaking news is that everything is now fine after a major incident. <laughs> Let's go over now live to our reporter, Eric Turner, who's at the scene of where everything is now fine. Thank you, Tim. Yes, the news we're getting from the security services is that everything is fine here and back to normal. That's the latest. As you can see behind me, everything is now fine. Uh, ignore the smoke. That's just from the recent explosion, because, as I say, everything is fine now. Can you tell us if there have been any fatalities? Uh, nobody's dying at the moment. Everything's fine. There have been some recent deaths due to the major incident, but that's over now and everything's fine. So the death toll is no longer rising? That's right. Everyone's either dead already or still alive, just like normal. <laughs> Hang on, I'm, I'm just hearing that uh, someone else has died, but everything's fine now. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. In other news, everything's fine in Shropshire after major flooding. The mayor of Shrewsbury has described the situation as totally OK, apart from the water everywhere, which will probably go after a bit. <laughs> The hunt for the Aberdeen serial killer goes on, but the investigating officer has issued a statement saying that everything is fine almost the whole time, apart from the very small interludes during which the serial killer is actually murdering someone. <laughs> so that all sounds pretty much fine. And now over to Karen with your emails. Thank you, Tim. Well, obviously, most of your emails have been about how everything is fine. Um, this is from John in London. Came out of nowhere, huge bang, sky lit up red, but then everything was fine again. Um, <laughs> Julie in Coventry described how everything was fine once my clothes stopped being on fire. <laughs> and Arthur from the Wirral sums up the situation by saying, those of us that are left alive are all fine. Thank you, Tim. Just time for a quick look at tomorrow's papers. The Telegraph leads with fineness resumed after major incident. <laughs> the Guardian goes with major tragedy forms grisly backdrop to general okayness. <laughs> the Sun headline simply reads fine. <laughs> the Mirror okay. <laughs> and the Daily Mail everything's fine. Fear it. Fear it. Jerry, uh, I, I think I've got something. What is it, Mike? <clears throat> it's, it's very similar to a a jewellery box I found in Nîmes in 86. It's the sort of thing a Roman governor's wife might have owned. <laughs> My God. It's a videotape. This is incredible. This is the single most important archaeological discovery ever made. The Romans had video technology. <laughs> Here we go. Latin, as spoken by an actual ancient Roman. Known and Dewey, my own fucking. Oh, don't know this oscular she saying? I think she's saying, turn that thing off, I haven't got my face on. And, and the man filming is saying, give us a kiss, darling. <sighs> Astonishing. <laughs> ah, now, he's very senior. I, I think he must be a senator. Jerry and I were particularly excited by this bit. So the toga is not only a practical item of clothing, given their climate, it also allows the Roman citizen to change discreetly into his swimming trunks. <laughs> <laughs> and there we are, all 106 minutes of it. I have my problems with this. 
Um, for instance, here, my research suggests that a centurion of this period would not have worn a scabbard of that length. Well, actually, a scabbard of exactly that length, dating from exactly this period, was found in Western Turkey. Well, congratulations. It's completely cleared up my reservations. <laughs> Gentlemen, surely the big thing we all seem to be ignoring is... Colour of the tunics. Uh, precisely. <laughs> Hold on. Have you all gone mad? This is a videotape. Yes, an ancient Roman videotape. Well done, Michael J. The Romans didn't have videotapes. It, it's made of plastic. Plastic wasn't invented until the 1950s. I find it incredible that this has been allowed to get this far. I am genuinely ashamed to be part of this faculty. <laughs> of course, Simon's quite right. I, I, I should have realised it was too good to be true. <laughs> I, I must seem very foolish to you all. Well, I hope you're pleased with yourself, Simon. <laughs> this man has put his whole life into building up this department, and you sit there and destroy everything he's worked for without a moment's thought. You must feel very proud of yourself, Simon. Well done. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not saying it's completely impossible. I mean, the ancient Egyptians had brain surgery. Really, Simon? Yeah. And, um, and there's some evidence that the ancient Egyptians had batteries as well. Great. Right, then. Well, I think we should go public with this, but it does mean everyone in this room staking their professional reputation on that. Are we all prepared to do it? Simon, you seem to have a couple of reservations a minute ago. Are you sure you're happy? Um, yeah. Yeah, let's, um, let's go for it. Yeah. And he was saying to me, what is this mysterious place, Sarah, or whatever? And I was like, yes, it is good. But then he started asking me all these questions about cars and power stations and mobile phones, and it was awful because I didn't have the faintest idea how any of them worked. Which meant that his journey through time had been wasted. <laughs> Which meant he was a bloody nerd, Ray. You know, the only guy to travel through time from the 17th century or the Victorian era or whatever, and the guy turns out to be a massive spod. And what? Then you woke up. What? Did you wake up at that realisation? It wasn't a dream, Ray. This all happened. <laughs> I wondered why you were seeming so underwhelmed. I thought it might be sang -froid. I'll give you a tick. <laughs> You're not doing too well on disingenuous, Colin. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, Ray, 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 no! That doesn't count as using it, Ray. Why not? Because you're just quoting the chart. Well, so what? You made me put a quid in a fuck jar just for calling it the fuck jar rather than for actually saying fuck. <laughs> that was a quote. And that should be three quid, thank you very much. Oh, no, Colin, we've bought the soda stream now. That's over. I must say, Ray, I think your efforts to avoid passing comment on the quite remarkable fact that I've been chatting to a time traveller are now bordering on the ludicrous. I suppose it's that I don't believe you. Right. It's like those guys with the end is nigh sandwich boards on. That they must be constantly amazed by how calm everyone's reaction to the news seems to be. <laughs> it must give them a new respect for the world that they think's about to end. These, they must be thinking, as everyone just ignores them, are good people to have around you in a crisis. <laughs> Until they see people's reactions to one solitary princess dying in a car crash, <laughs> and then they suddenly realise that actually no one's been believing them. Yes, indeed. The mass suicides of the Endis Nysters in the wake of Diana's death is about the only unsung element left of that tragedy. Mr. <laughs> Cappuccino! Mine! <laughs> you sent him out for coffees? So the latte must be yours! <laughs> you sent a time traveller out for coffees? <laughs> At last, finally, I get a rise out of you. The steam pressure of the contraption which created this was quite enthralling, so I apologise for the delay. <laughs> Told you he was a nerd. <laughs> I mean, where did they get the idea that you're the clever one? You're nowhere near as clever as you think. Well, neither are you. Ah, ah, yes, but at least I know I'm not. What? Y you know you're not as clever as you think? Yes, unlike you. So how clever do you think you are? 
very clever. And how clever do you know you are, really? Well, less clever than that. You've laid some kind of trap. So, to recap, what's good about you, as opposed to me, is that you know you're several degrees less clever than you think you are, and that's somehow morally healthy. Whereas my opinion of my own intelligence, as flawed an evaluation as anyone's is likely to be, is deemed unreliable because of its, albeit subjective, consistency. <laughs> you do see why you never get laid, don't you? <laughs> One. Captain, the Lord has delivered us to a truly wondrous land. Lush subtropical plains stretching as far as the eye can see. It's 90 degrees in the shade, even though it's November. There are herds of seven foot tall, two legged creatures bouncing across the landscape at tremendous speeds. Yes. Do you know where it reminds me of? Wales. <laughs> Wales? Really, sir? Oh, yes. Don't you think? What, the. Vast terra incognita with fauna and flora hitherto undreamt of by sights puts you in mind of nothing so much as real. No, of course not. Not North Wales. That's ridiculous. It's nothing like North Wales. No, South Wales, of course. <laughs> the resemblance is uncanny. Right. Does this mean you're going to name it what I think you're going to name it? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Remind me, who, who's the captain? You are. And who's got the captain's hat, the captain's table, the captain's cabin, and the captain's log? You have all of them, sir. Well, I tell you what, number one, you're an ambitious man. Why don't you decide what we call it? I think we should call it New South Wales. Good name. <laughs> Hi, guys, how are you? Oh, not bad. Anita, good to see you. Terry, this is Gary and Michelle. I was telling you about them. Hello, uh, nice to meet you. Hi. Gary works from home as well, don't you, Gary? Oh, uh, you've given up the nine to five as well then, Terry? Well, I've only been doing it a few months, but... Uh... Takes a bit of getting used to. <laughs> well, look, I'll leave you boys to it. Michelle, come on. Some people I want you to meet. So, have you, uh, you know... What? You know... <laughs> Got past the wanking stage yet. I beg your pardon? Don't pretend. You've got that look in your eye. I don't know what you... Does it get any easier? <laughs> You've just got to learn to control it. I mean, I'd wake up with the best of intentions, you know, I mean, streamline my business plan, market research, but... Within half an hour of the wife leaving the house, you're on the old internet. I mean, the first month, I did it so often I couldn't sit down. We've all been there. It's getting harder to explain to Anita why I'm not making any progress with the business, you know? I mean, I can't tell her that instead of phoning potential clients, I'm just frantically wanking off over the most mildly arousing image on daytime TV. See, you've just got to learn to timetable it properly. Really? It's like a reward system. You, you, you make a good phone call, have a wank to celebrate. <laughs> Works for me. Sounds like a good idea. I mean, I nearly wanked the whole business away a couple of years ago. <laughs> Had to claw it back from the brink. Hey, what are you boys colluding over? Uh, no, uh, Gary was just giving me some really good advice about working from home, you know, keeping track of your finances, allotting your time effectively. You should be telling you how to rein in the wanking. <laughs> I mean, on your own at home all day, I know what I'd be doing. <laughs> Hi. Of course they're real flamingos! <laughs> Sorry, I mean, do you want a season ticket or a family ticket? Season tickets are 500 pound and they're very popular. Um, just a family ticket, please. Very well, that'll be 35 pound. Follow the signs. Tickets, please. <laughs> no binoculars. I can hardly see anything. Can't we get a bit closer? I advise you not to cross that line for your own safety. 
The flamingos are very unpredictable. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. No, don't go! Stop him, for God's sake! Fancy a cocktail? Well, I... It's a daiquiri. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, look, your clothes are all wet. What are you, a 38? Yeah, but... Oh, come on, at least try it on. Hmm? <laughs> yes, that's nice. Do you like the music of Bruce Springsteen? Uh, actually, yes, I do. Yes, I love a bit of the boss. I saw him in Philadelphia once. Really? It must have been amazing. <laughs> Mummy, is Daddy coming back? A season ticket is £500. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry I said the thing about you not having sex very often. I'm, I'm sure you get up to all sorts and just don't tell me about it. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, that's all been going quite well, actually. Really? Sorry, really? Uh, yes, uh, let's just say there's been quite a lot of pussy action. David! See you at Marcos tonight, David. Way! Way! <laughs> See you there, James. <laughs> what? Are you... Are you going to some kind of sex place with him? It's not a sex place, Rob. It's just a unisex nudist sauna. It's, it's all perfectly friendly. Oh, yes, yeah, sounds friendly. What is your problem? Why are you going with him? I'm not going to go on my own. I might get horribly raped. And he's a big guy and, and you're married. Well, I could have gone out with you looking for women before I was married. You were in a long-term relationship. Before her. You were in a long-term relationship. Before her. You were in a long-term relationship. Before him. They were in a long-term relationship. They weren't a long-term relationship. They still didn't talk to me much. All right, they don't count. Before them. Before them? We, we hadn't met. <sighs> All right, fine. Well, you go and have fun with loads of women. Well, I... I sort of might. While I have fun with one excellent and very, very sexy woman for the rest of my life. Good for you. You do know about condoms, don't you? Oh, for God! Well, he won't explain it! <laughs> Greenland? Whatever! 